Hi, I'm Miss Tara. I'm a teacher for WQLN. And today I'm going to have fun talking to you and learning about something magical that happens in the winter. Now, a lot of people think winter, brr, cold. But with that cold comes something beautiful outside, snow. Snow makes winter worth it because we can enjoy it sitting inside and looking out our window, or we could go out and play in it and really enjoy it. If you know your letters, you can help me spell the word snow. S what letter does that start with? Correct, S. S-N-O-W, snow. That spells the word snow. When I say the word snow and I think about going outside, I think of some words that start with the word snow. The first one I think of, you take it in your hand, that snow, and you back it, and you roll it, and that it would be a snow ball, right? A snowball. It's fun to go outside and make a lot of snowballs. Now, if you take that snowball and you roll it on the ground and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger, you can put some of those big snowballs together and you can build a, you guessed it, a snowman. This one has one, two, three snowballs on it. Snowball and snowman, both those words start with snow. That's so fun to make new words out of a word. Now I'm gonna enter the world of imagination, so come along with me and we will go out and play in the snow together. The first story I'm going to read to you has an activity that's fun to do with your family and friends outside when it snows. But before we go outside, we need to bundle up so we can keep nice and warm. So what are some things we could put on to keep warm in the snow? The first thing I think of is a coat or a jacket. And I already have my fluffy jacket on, so I'm good to go. Next, I want to keep my neck warm. So can you think of anything that would be good to wear to keep your neck warm? Maybe you said scarf. That's a great thing to keep your neck warm. So I'm going to put my scarf on right now. And if you have one at home, you can put one on too. It's fun to play make-believe. Okay, so my neck's nice and cozy. What could I wear on my head to keep my head warm? A hat, very good. I'm gonna wear a hat. So let me get my hat on. You can put yours on too if you have one. This keeps my head and my ears nice and warm. I wanna stay out in the snow as long as I can. Okay, and finally, if I wanna touch those snowballs and play in the snow, I need to keep my hands warm. So what would be good to keep my hands warm? Very good. Mittens. Mittens or gloves will work. So I'm going to put my mittens on since that's what I have right here. You can put yours on at home. Oh, I think I'm pretty cozy now and ready to go play. So come join along as I read a story. And in imagination, we go to the world of snow, snow, snow. Oh my, one thing about having these mittens on, it makes reading a book really difficult. So you can keep yours on at home if you're not too warm. I'm going to take mine off so I can turn the pages of my story. Snow, Snow, Snow by Lee Harper. Snow, Snow, Snow by Lee Harper. One night, the wind howled, and the snow fell all night long. The next morning, surprise! It was the perfect sledding day. We got ready as fast as we could. A 
and hiked to the lake where there is the best sledding in the whole wide world. We made a triple decker sandwich. And swooshed down the hill faster than the speed of sound. Then we had a big bump and shot into the air. Up in the clouds. We were sledding, you need a sled. They went sledding and they had fun. Although there was a surprise, they crashed and then they did, it was such a fun word. Do you remember this word? Spoomph. That's fun to say. Can you say that at home? Spoomph. Some words are just fun to say. Did the boys and girls get hurt in that story? I don't think so, because if I remember correctly, at the end of the story, they shouted these words. Again, again, which means they really enjoyed the part of sledding, even the falling. That's such a fun story. I hope you enjoyed it. I just love this book, Snow, Snow, Snow. And I loved it so much, I'd like to share another story with you. In Snow, 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 the main character was a puppy. But in our next story, the main character is a bunny. Now you may have noticed both of these stories have something in common. They're both about snow and they're both about an activity. Our Snow, Snow, Snow book had our puppy dog sledding. But in the story Bunny Slopes, this bunny is doing another activity in the you can do in the snow called skiing. I really love this book because we can use the book and help our bunny ski down the slopes. You can help me at home. So if you have a book at your house near you or a magazine or a piece of paper, you could even use the remote if you wanted to. Go grab something now and you and I can do the activity together. Let's have some fun on Bunny Slopes by Claudia Rudin. Bunny Slopes by Claudia Rudin. you want to join me for a ski day? But where's all the snow? Maybe we could make some. Could you please shake the book? Can you shake your book a little bit and make some snow for the bunny? Oh, that's better. See a little coming down. But could you shake the book much harder? Let's really get some snow made for that bunny. Yeah. Oh, uh, mm, 
it might have been a little too much. Can you tap, tap, tap the book? That should pack down the snow. Let's try to see that bunny again. I can only see his ears. Perfect. Thank you. Now maybe you can help me go downhill. Could you tilt the book to your right? That's not exactly downhill. Maybe you could tilt the book a bit more. Can you really tilt that book? Let's see if we can get that bunny ski. <gasps> Carrots! What fun. Thank you. <gasps> Yikes! Quick, turn the book. Bye. right side up. <sighs> Thanks. Really? I'm fine. Let's try that clip again. Would you tilt the book to your right? I'll need some speed. Tilt that book again. Perfect. Get ready to jump. Zowie, easy as carrot cake. A hole. See the hole? No problem. Ha! I told you. See another hole. Ah! Oops. Oh! Hi, Mom! Time to warm up after a long day on the slopes. This one is for you. Thank you so much for helping the bunny ski. And let's see if we can think of anything else that these two books had the same. They both had animal characters, they both have snow, but if you think about the story also, in both stories, the characters fell jumping in the snow, didn't they? And both of the characters were okay. It was just a fun, fun accident. Also in the story, we had a surprise ending. In one story, they screamed again and again and they wanted to keep sledding. But in the story Bunny Slopes, he does my favorite thing to do after a fun day outside in the snow, and that's to go inside and take off all your wet clothes and put on your warm comfy clothes. Hat goes off, scarf goes off, mittens, your boots, everything wet. And put on your warm, cozy clothes and make yourself a nice cup of cocoa. Both of those stories are so much fun. And those are both fun activities that you can do outside in the snow. After reading those stories with you, I almost feel like I played out in the snow, do you? Well, the snow can be fun for indoor activities too. Sometimes it's fun to make crafts when you're inside. So today we're gonna take one of the characters from the story, the story Bunny Slopes and we're gonna make a snow bunny together. This is a fun, easy craft that you can do at home with just a few things that you gather around your house and a grown-up who can help you with the scissors and the tying and things like that. So I'm gonna go over all the materials that you and your grown-up need to gather to have fun making your very own snow bunny. Okay, first thing I like to do when I do a craft is gather all my supplies. So 
you need to find an old sock somewhere. It could be white, like the bunny in the story. Could be brown. Could be black. Could be any color. Could be purple, orange, or pink, if you want to make a colorful bunny. Since our bunny in the story was white, I'm going to choose a white sock. Besides a sock, you'll need some rice or beans. Hopefully you have some around the house that you have not cooked yet so that you can fill the sock with them. I chose some white rice. You'll need two rubber bands, a pair of scissors that the grown-up can help you with, an old piece of fabric or a piece of ribbon laying around that you don't need to use anymore. Make sure you ask somebody before you take it. A couple of markers. I chose blue, black, and pink for the nose. And last but not least, to put our bunny in the snow, I happen to have some cotton balls around, so I'm gonna put those in the end. Okay, so to start this snow bunny, you'll need to take your sock, and I kind of already started filling this one up because it can get kind of messy, so make sure that maybe you're somewhere over a plate or a bowl so you don't get rice all over your floor. And I find that if you use a spoon or a little cup, you can just fill that sock right up. And you want to fill it up to about the heel, which is about there. So I'll put a couple more spoonfuls in. Okay, that looks good. And after you do that, you have two rubber bands. So you're gonna take the rubber bands and you're gonna put one right over the sock, all the way down, right almost near the top and tie it. These will be your bunny's ears. And then you're gonna take the other one and go right over the top again, only you're gonna go a little bit past that rubber band. Oh, I would say about a third of the way down that ball. If you can kind of scrunch it a little bit, you form the bunny's head. So depending on the size of the rubber band, you might have to tighten it up a little bit. So you want the little top part to be smaller than the body because this is the bunny's head, and then this is the bunny's body. And so far he has only one ear, but we'll take care of that. Okay, so the next step of just giving your bunny two ears, because we know that bunnies have two ears, just like people have two ears. So this is where you want to have your grown-up help you. Unless you have a child scissors you're allowed to use, you need to have your grown-up help cut you. You're going to cut right down the center of that sock. So here we go. And cut all the way down to where the rubber band almost just about begins. Okay? And then you made yourself two nice floppy ears for your bunny. Now if you want your bunny's ears shorter, you can cut them shorter. If you want them longer and nice and floppy, you can keep them longer, it's up to you. And if you want around the edges, you can, or you can make them pointed however you want to do it. I think I will make mine rounded, so I'm just going to cut a little roundness on the end. I'm going to leave this bunny's ears nice and floppy. There's our bunny. So now you can use your markers and you can draw two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. So I'm gonna draw two little eyeballs, one, two. And you can decorate your bunny any way you want. And how about a little pink nose? Here we go. And I'm gonna finish this bunny with some little whiskers coming right off the nose. I think I'll give him three whiskers on each side. You can decide how many you want to do. It's up to you. There we go. Okay, and now, of course, if it's a snow bunny, it needs a snow scarf. Remember, we wore a scarf to keep that warm when we were skiing. And when we were, and when we were sledding. 
So you want to cut an old piece of fabric, make sure it's old, and make sure you've asked a grown-up if you can have that piece of fabric. And if you want, you can cut, see, cut the ends of the fabric and give it a little fringe. That might be fun, because sometimes scarves have fringe on the end. Just use your imagination and creativity. And then tie it right around that bunny's neck. Just like this. Got to keep that bunny's neck warm. There you go, just like we tie a scarf on ourselves. And you've got yourself a little sock snow bunny with things that were just laying around your house. Now, I like to take those bunnies. Oh, look at this. I have a mom bunny sitting right here. Look at this, a mom and a baby together. And I'm gonna take that cotton Take some cotton balls, regular cotton balls, and if you kind of separate them, you can kind of make it look like it's snow. And just set it all around. You can set it on a table. You can put it in the middle of your dinner table if you want, or on a counter, or on your nightstand in your bedroom, somewhere where you can enjoy your snow bunnies. Um, sometimes it's fun to make your whole family. If you have a bunch of socks that you're not using, you can make one bunny for each person that's in your family. That would be really fun, and then you would have a whole snow bunny family. So I hope you enjoy this craft at home and have a ball making your snow bunny and snow bunny family. Well, it was sure fun making that snow bunny craft for all of you at home. I hope on a wintry, snowy day when you're stuck inside, you get to make a snow bunny of your very own. While we were working on that craft, I had some friends drop by who would love to share with all of you some of the things they like to do inside and outside on snowy days. I hope you enjoy. When it's snowy out, I like to have snowball fights outside and I like to color inside. When it's really snowy out, I like to go ice skating, but when I go inside, I like to drink hot cocoa to warm me up. When it's really snowy out, I love to build snowmen. And when I'm inside, I love to sit by the fire. Well, those were certainly some great ideas of things that we can do when it's a snowy day. And if you're interested in making that adorable snow bunny that I showed you how to make earlier, and you don't quite remember how or what you need, feel free to log on to wqln.org and go to the Learning at Home page you will find the Snow Bunny craft on this website. Well, I had so much fun today coming into your home and reading with you and having fun learning with you and making a craft with you. And I can't wait to spend another time with you again. So until then, keep reading. Keep learning and keep watching WQLN. Let it snow.